I was Sharon Kenny down here at Banty Fur again. We promised an update. Thanks very much, Sharon, for talking to us. And we do have some support in the background. That is your business, dog grooming. Yeah. Um, it's been interesting for me because some people are not wanting to talk so much now to the media. So let's ask you first of all, did you get any reaction from the last time we chatted? Uh, yes, people were very positive. Hmm. And uh, it went as far as Bermuda, actually. Oh, right. My friends in Bermuda, so... Did you get lots of response from government people? You know, was, was, was there people concerned of what your plight was? I didn't hear it from government, no. Didn't. no. Now, we've been talking to the minister, and he says they are now engaging more, they're coming in, talking to people. Have you had that? Uh, yeah, he... Um, it was an odd coincidence, I think. I, I posted on the, my Facebook page that um, apparently he had been saying that he was visiting, and I said, hands up, who's met with him um, at your place of business mm-hmm. and um, within 15 minutes he walked in the shop really and uh, three people in tow did he know much about your business at that stage or, you know because you he, just, he didn't say a whole lot he just listened right. and uh, he had somebody from DOE and uh, Keith Podmore the contracting manager and uh, another young guy who I assumed was one of the workers so they didn't say much oh they didn't I was going to say did you feel any confidence from that meeting um, I just basically told him how it was impacting me and other businesses and he listened and at one point I became quite emotional and I felt a bit silly uh, and then I thought no he, he needs to see this he needs to see how, how this is impacting people yeah. so I welled up at one point and I felt like it, quite silly but it was basically how I was feeling so I mean this is stress isn't it which is affecting Very everyone stressful. yeah it's, uh, it's, and it's constant it's relentless so it's, and that, as I told you before, was not what I was prepared to. I never even thought about that aspect. Okay. Well, we've been a few months. Things have moved out here. I mean, I know you're still keeping account on workmen. Has it got any different, you know, since we last chatted? Uh, not really. I mean, I, I, I set up the page in, I think, April in response to what I was hearing about other businesses. Um, some of the media outlets then picked it up and we have quite a following now yeah. um, so that that was meant to support the businesses um, and so that's been very positive and I think DOI are aware of that now because they actually contacted one member of the media and said this is not our page right. it's a parody page they called it right. so that's been positive um, and I've met with a lot of the other business owners and we've, we've got like a small community I would think now of workers yeah. describe it that way right. um, of no, businesses not workers and I do yes I and the DOI are also aware that I every morning I count the workers between here and Queen's Brown and see term okay, well, well, like today what's, and what's it been like out there today uh, today there were 12 um, four of them were standing around watching one guy dig uh, another guy was doing something I'm not sure what uh, two of them were standing around gesticulating and having a discussion about something and another two were walking somewhere else and another two were just wandering around. It's, no. di- it's discouraging when you yeah. see that. I mean, because it's a beautiful day. Uh, I, I one day, in response to uh, posting on their page that there was nobody out there, the response was, it's raining. And I said, that's not a good reason mm-hmm. to have nobody. To- Surely there's something I can do in the rain. So, um, yeah. Now, uh, Claire Betson, Chris Robert Shaw, I presume this is Douglas East still this part of the promenade. I mean, have they been involved with you much? No, I haven't met with them, uh, but I am going to send her an email about the impact on my business because yeah. it's become, although up to the, a couple of months ago, it didn't seem to be impacting badly. I'm now suffering like the rest of them, not perhaps as badly, but I'm uh, struggling. Can right you now. elaborate on that? I don't you know, if too, too, but you know, <laughs> are you... Well, I'm Meet down, your rent, I'm, so I'm down at least uh, uh, three thousand um, pounds. My, my overdraft is maxed out, so is my credit card, and for the business. And I had tr- uh, difficulty meeting the rent this month. Gee, wow. So yeah, so I'm with the group now. Right, um, and we keep hearing about there is compensation schemes, but as Claire was saying, it, it clearly criteria-wise, it's a lot of people aren't hitting the right numbers to get any of that compensation, and she's promising to look at it again well yeah at the end of the day I'm going to be down far more than 6,000 I would imagine when this is all over but uh, what I've been hearing I mean the cri- they've made the criteria such that nobody can meet it uh, for example you have to have employees um, now the people next door work for themselves they don't qualify um, and down the road there's another business apparently that doesn't qualify either for that reason 
The second criteria is you have to be down 20%. I'm down 60% on my retail, but overall I'm down about 12 or 13%, so I don't qualify yet for it because I'm not down 20%. The hotels and restaurants, because they've been hit so hard, they're behind, as I understand it, in their VAT payments. You have to be up to date on your income tax, your NI, and your VAT payments. So they, they can't meet the criteria because they're behind in those payments. Now, really what they're asking them to be is down 40% because if you think about it, if you struggle to pay your VAT, you're already down 20%. And then they want another 20% on top of that before they give you the compensation. Then, to make matters worse, uh, there's a little clause in there that says if you go bust in six months after your payment, you've got to pay the money back, which doesn't make any sense because if you went bust, you have nothing. You see, so they've made it uh, extremely difficult to qualify. It's a, it's a bit of a joke, really. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting this, this. This must be quite strain on you and everybody that have this on you. But I suppose at the end day when this started, everyone thought, you know, this is a good news story, right? Is it's just the way it's going, the way it's been handled? Well, it, it, when they came to me in in December and said we're going to start the work in January, it just was like crack on, you know. Um, but we never imagined it was going to be like this. I mean, everybody I've talked to is shocked at the way this has proceeded. They just expected it to go block by block by block. Now, the interesting thing is when I tried to find out who agreed with whom to do it this way, I was told that Keith Podmore put his hand up and said I, it was me. And then now they're saying it was Alden's decision to do the Central Corridor. So we've never been told actually how this happened and why it's going the way it is and I was told when I inquired oh we'll try and find out but you know nothing's going to change so what's the point basically was their response is the light at the end of the tunnel not at the present time uh, but I'm determined I told the minister you know I've worked nine years to build this business and I am not going to let it slip away because of this project I mean I, I'm determined to, uh, to to see it through my landlord came down the other day and said uh, our lease expired last month and I said oh and he said do you want to renew and I said yes please you know I mean I, there's no way I'm leaving and uh, I'll hang in until I die I mean I told the minister that I said I had three goals and the last one was to see this thing finished and whatever it takes and I will continue to be a thorn in their side because I'm really really fed up I mean the disrespect we've been shown one of the things I'd like to tell you about is when they first had the set of plans this shop was shown as empty Next door was shown as New Manila. Uh, the other side of me was shown, shown as Savvy. Savvy hasn't existed for over four years. This shop was shown as empty when it's been here for nine years. And they tried to say, oh, well, they were old plants. And I said, well, you had the right name on the other side of me. Oh, well, somebody must have known that that was the name of the business. Then just, and so they, they apologized. I said, no, it, it's not that. It's not the fact that the name wasn't there. The fact is that it shows me that you didn't even think about us when you started this project. We weren't even on the map. So then, six months down the road, we got a letter concerning something else a couple of weeks ago. There was a plan attached to it. And on that plan, next door to me, where the new Manila is, it said Sherwood. And I and I and and then this place was shown as empty. So I wrote them a letter and I said, you know, it amazes me that the continued disrespect that you show for these businesses when you can't even get our names right. I've been next to the New Manila for nine years. I have been next to the Four Seasons for a short time. I have never heard of the Sherwood. And I did some investigating and they apparently existed 25 years ago. It was a hotel next door. But when they even give us documents, they don't even take the care to make sure that the information is accurate. And it's insulting and it's offensive. And I told them that and I, I was offended and angry uh, on behalf of Melody next door because it, that shouldn't happen. It's disrespectful and it just shows, I think, their attitude towards this whole thing when it comes to the businesses.